Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. We're in part two of a series with Tim Albrick, founder of the YFP uh, community, uh, your financial pharmacist community. Uh, he's in there with Tim Church and Tim Baker, and I was, appreciate him coming back on. And we're, we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the curriculum uh, in their new student loan course. So Tim Albrick, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. Okay, well, let's dive right into the curriculum. Uh, there's a welcome. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to talk about was the course workbook. So I, I, I think someone's fear is that they're going to come into this course and just get a bunch of videos uh, that maybe they could have gotten online and that there's no real uh, pattern to it or schedule to it. Can you talk a little bit about the course workbook that comes along with it uh, so that, you know, as pharmacists, we tend to be closer to type A than type B uh, and sure. we like things to be organized and structured. Can you talk a little bit about the workbook itself? Absolutely. Let me let me point readers as well to the site where they can hear a lot of what we'll talk about here and, and get a summary of that. That's at courses.yourfinancialpharmacist.com. Again, courses.yourfinancialpharmacist.com. So the workbook for us was a critical piece, and, and this might be my academic background coming in, but I, I knew that we needed something to guide people to keep them accountable and to take action because what we know about this topic of student loans is that it's very easy to get overwhelmed and it's very easy to get paralyzed and to not take action. And so the two pieces, among others, that we really thought would help people move along and stay motivated was a workbook where they could fill in their own information take some notes, keep it active so they don't just have to listen to me, Tim or Tim, kind of drone on for for hours uh, of video content. But then also we have a private Facebook group for those that are enrolled in the course. And we think that will allow people to ask questions that are specific to their personal situation, get feedback, share wins, where they're struggling, all those things. So the workbook is really intended to be a, a guide. We've got spots where you can fill in information that we think are key points. We highlight key points of the course. Um, and so that workbook will walk you through all three modules of the course. And we even have some specific places where you will fill in your own personal information, uh, which we think are the high impact action items, like when you get to inventorying your loans or getting your total loan balance or calculating and determining what your total amount that you're going to pay off and what your best repayment strategy is. That workbook is really meant to kind of help supplement the videos and walk you through to get you to the point of completion. Because our goal is that people don't buy the course. Our goal is that people finish the course and they obviously are get to the clarity of having the best repayment option and strategy for their situation. Okay, well, let's actually talk about uh, the the genesis of the course uh, and then how you divided it up. I know there's three modules, and I think each of you have taken a, a part of those modules, just like uh, you were at APHA in Nashville, and you know you split up into three groups and then you know kind of used your expertise. Can you talk yeah. about the three modules and your specific expertise in each? Yeah, absolutely. So I think for those that aren't familiar with the team at YFP, uh, myself, obviously, I'm a pharmacist uh, educator as well, teach at a college of pharmacy. Uh, Tim Church, who is my co-author on Seven Figure Pharmacist, he's a pharmacist, ambulatory care pharmacist at the VA uh, down in Florida. And then Tim Baker is a certified financial planner, a fee-only certified financial planner, and he also owns uh, Script Financial. So what we've really identified, and as we brought the three Tims together, which has become the running joke, uh, as you'll appreciate <laughs> <laughs> Tim U, um, Tim University. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, is that we all bring something very different to the table. And I am so appreciative for how they look at things in a different way. And so when we sat down and spent hours upon hours planning the course, and we, we really were intentional, we actually cut a lot of content because we really felt like we wanted to get to the meat. We wanted to keep people motivated. We wanted to keep it actionable. We didn't want to get people lost in the weeds. And so we ended up with these three different modules. And then we said, okay, based on our background, based on our own personal finance situations, based on our areas of expertise knowledge-wise, who's going to take which section in terms of the lead of actually delivering the content? So, for example, module one is all about getting organized and, and inventorying your loans and making sure you understand terminology and budgeting. And I've kind of become the default budgeting person uh, and obviously went through this journey myself of trying to work through and, and, and didn't understand a lot of what we talked about in module one. So I took the lead on that. Module two 
when it comes to actually choosing a strategy, and I'm sure we'll talk about each one of these in a little bit more detail, Tim Baker does this every day with clients of actually walking them through A to Z about how do you get from knowing what you have to actually looking at the rest of your situation to choosing the best repayment plan for your personal situation. So he took the lead there. And then for those that know Tim Church, we call Tim Church. He's, he's the all in Tim. So he's, he's always, he's (laughs) always full throttle on everything, right? So he's, he's a a freak of nature when it comes to just an awesome work ethic. But when it comes to his personal financial situation, uh, he is just crushing it in terms of paying off his student loans. And so for him, accelerating payoff, optimizing your payoff strategy and making the most of the situation is, I think, what he does so well. And so he took the lead in module three, which covers all of that information in much more detail. Cool. All right. Well, let's start with module one. Uh, and we, we've talked a little bit about this in part one about inventorying. Uh, but tell me a little bit about uh, the education that someone's going to get in terms of, because I think that's kind of the first step is, is uh, I think a mistake, you know, maybe physicians and, and highly educated other people make is to say that I'm an expert in something. So that means I'm going to be good at something else. And if you can talk to my wife, I can't put a painting on a wall, uh, <laughs> but I can, you know, calculate a creatinine clearance. So yeah. uh, tell me a little bit about just getting organized and getting yourself educated and how this module will will make me a lot closer to someone who can speak intelligently just about student loans as as they exist. Yeah, I really see, you know, I always think about this in in terms of what are the takeaways at the end of something, right? What am I actually going to walk away with and get? And when I think of module one, the student will actually walk away with their complete inventory they will walk away with what their total cost of their loans are. So how much is the total balance? What's the average interest rate? And we actually walk them through calculating how much the interest is accruing each and every day. Talk about a humbling moment, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So as a little bit of a spoiler alert, if somebody has the average educational debt of a graduate right now of 163 or so thousand dollars, their interest is accruing at about $27 a day, which is crazy. Um, and then the other big takeaway is they actually walk away with a complete budget. And through that budget, they determine exactly how much they have available each and every month to put toward their student loans. And that's critical because you can't choose the best option until you know how much you have available each and every month to put towards your loan. And you can't do that until you know the rest of your financial situation, which is obviously comes through the budgeting process. And so there's lots of content we have out there where we talk about things like inventorying your loans or budgeting or what's an interest rate and how do you calculate it. But one of the beauties of this course is we actually walk through step by step and we keep you accountable in the process. So you and I in part one, for example, we talked about inventorying your loans, but talking about it versus actually us showing you screen by screen exactly through the federal repayment estimator and their website. Those are two totally different things, right? And we're going to keep you accountable and keep it actionable that not only are we going to talk about inventory loans, show you how to inventory your loans, but we have the, the worksheet and the table that will actually make sure you do it and you have that done before you move on to the next step. And so lesson one of module one, we actually walk you through screen by screen. How do you go into the federal system and inventory your federal loans? Lesson two, we show you how to pull a credit report to do a private loan inventory and what are you looking for. Lesson three, we actually talk all about loan basics, so terminology and making sure you understand it because the more you understand about your loans, the more diligent you're going to be in having a plan. Together, lesson four, we actually calculate the total cost. We dissect the anatomy of a student loan and and really break down exactly what makes up a loan. And I think for students that are hearing this, it's critical to understand how is your loan balance made up? Because you can then think about what can I do to minimize that so I can expedite my repayment upon graduation. And then the final lesson, lesson five of module one, we walk through step by step how to do a zero based budget. And the takeaway there is actually having the budget done. And the final takeaway there is saying, OK, each and every month I have this much available. 500, 700, 1200, 1800, whatever that number is, this much available to put toward my student loan payments each and every month, because then that filters into module two, where they're going to choose the best repayment option and strategy. Okay. Well, before we jump to module two, I wanted to talk a little bit about actually using the course and and how I would use this course. And I guess in in my head, um, I'm thinking back to the Garmin. We don't really use Garmin's maybe anymore, but uh, the Garmin was just a saver because 
it was a third party telling you to go right here or turn left yeah. here. And, and so there was no argument between the husband and wife as to, no, no, this is the best way. No, this is the best way. I guess if I were to use this, I would actually probably see this individually. Like I would watch it, then my wife would watch it, and then yes. we would probably get very at least one bottle of wine then start going through this because I think it, it it's really – if you change the framework to, okay, this is something fun we're going to do together. It's going to be an opportunity to come together at a certain time in the week and talk about it. Yeah. Um, how would you recommend maybe people come together to do this? And, and it doesn't have to be husband and wife. It can maybe two friends or like uh, you know, at your journey and Tim Church's journey are very different, but in some ways you've come together. Uh, how would people come together to, to work on this, do you think? Yeah. And I love the point you made. It, it doesn't have to be a spouse. If you have a spouse, great. You know, if you guys can watch it together, great. If schedules don't allow, I like your idea. You watch it separately, you come together. And I think by having a third party, having a workbook, uh, it's nobody who's taking the lead and the other people's not, other person's not doing anything. The course is guiding you and helping to facilitate the conversation. But even if there's not a significant other, I am such an advocate of having an accountability partner. So sign up with a friend, sign up with a co-student, a co-resident, a group of of residents, a group of fellow pharmacists where you guys can come together once a week and say, all right, let's discuss this. Where are we at? Where are we getting stuck? Or the Facebook group is also intended to do that as well. And I, and I think the way it's structured, Tony, where it's step-by-step -step with the workbook, it really helps to do that. But certainly having somebody else in the picture will help facilitate that as well. And, and one other thing I would add here is that Probably some of the most time we spent before we launched this course was being very intentional about the sequence and the order of these lessons. Because we knew, for example, that most people want to start with choosing the best repayment strategy, but you can't do that without first getting the inventory and without first doing the budget and understanding everything about your loans. And so back to my point earlier, can somebody read about loans and kind of figure all this out? Yeah, I think obviously they could, but here's the pathway and the framework to really take you A to Z and to help facilitate those conversations when you're working on it with someone else. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about that payoff strategy. And uh, Tim Baker, I've talked to a number of times. He's a graduate of the United States Military Academy. So someone yeah. that you can you can trust to, to help you along. Uh, he's a fee-only certified planner. So we know that uh, he's, his best interest is the way that he structured it. It's especially good for someone that's a new grad. But maybe we could talk, first of all, just uh, in general, what are the takeaways or things that you would come home with uh, after you went through this module? So, yeah, so module two, we titled Determine Your Payoff Strategy. And this is really, in our opinion, this is the, the bread and butter of the course. So th this is the takeaway where at the end of module two, you actually leave saying this is the best one repayment strategy for my personal situation. And we knew when we started this course, this had to be the takeaway. And if it wasn't the takeaway, we were failing the people in the audience that we're trying to serve. Because the thing we keep hearing over and over again is, uh, I just don't know which option to choose. There's too many. It's confusing. It's overwhelming. And so we help people walk through the math. We help people walk step by step to make sure they can evaluate all of the different repayment options in the federal system all of the private refinance system, layer on what they learned with module one, put it in one table, and then layer on top of that some of the emotional components, the life situation, those factors we talked about in part one of this recording, and then leave and say, ah, I got it. For me, this repayment option, maybe it's the standard repayment option in the federal system. Maybe it's a five-year refinance. Maybe it's repayee with loan forgiveness. It's different for everyone, but you can walk away with confidence and clarity and say, because of what I did in module one, because of my personal situation, I've looked at all the options. I've done my own budget. I've evaluated everything that's there. I've looked at the math. I've added on the factors beyond the math. And this one option with clarity and confidence is where I need to go. And that's really what we accomplish in module two. And we cannot overestimate how important it is to have that clarity. And so there's two different uh, strategies we walk through here of the forgiveness options and non-forgiveness of refinancing. Then we walk through the details of the math and Tim Baker does an awesome job of this. And then he's built some really awesome case studies, case studies for single, case studies for married, and then a whole separate lesson, lesson on considerations for residents. So we're confident whether somebody's single, married, resident, non-resident, that they're going to be able to leave this lesson and say, I feel good. This is my one option and plan that I'm going to walk away with. Okay, and, well, Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say, I was going to throw you a curveball, but go ahead and finish and then I'll throw you the curveball. I was going to say, we've got, we, we beta tested this course with uh, about, about 40 individuals and we've already got some great feedback from people saying, this is what was accomplished at the end of lesson two and the peace of mind beyond the financial savings, but the peace of mind from having that, uh, is, is huge. So we had one pharmacist who determined, you know, refinance was the right move for them. They saved a percent. Uh, on their loans, 1%, and they're going to save over $14,000 in interest. We had somebody else, uh, Alyssa, who's a student pharmacist down in Gainesville, say, you know, the course helped give peace of mind when it comes to student loans, ready to be, be able to tackle their debt with confidence. They got the knowledge to get organized. And so I, I think the savings are going to be incredible. But also, again, back to the the non-math components, it's all those other factors that you need to think about as well that we hear many people saying, I'm stressed, I'm overwhelmed, I don't know where, where to go with this. And that's really the goal at the end of module two is to say, this is it. This is the one option for me. Okay. Well, you've got, you know, single married consideration for residents. I was just wondering, what if you have married residents? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah, we, we, we cover that. I mean, the, the, the case study single case studies married are two separate things. And then there's a separate section that's considerations for residents that, which will address both residents, single residents married. So it's not a, not an exclusive thing, but looking at the singles, looking at the married and then looking at the resident specific factors. So what, one of the things we identified and, and I didn't have appreciation for this as a resident is just one example. We see a lot of residents that are deferring their loans during residency that actually qualify for public service loan forgiveness. And for most residents, that strategy doesn't really make sense because the way the income driven plans are designed is that many residents would actually have a zero dollar payment during the residency year. So why defer when you could have a zero dollar payment that would count towards the qualifying payments for public service loan forgiveness? So these are the kind of tidbits and things huh. that we talked about in the considerations for residents. I was just looking at my student. She was looking at me like, huh, that's Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I, I guess it would certainly not be some, I, I guess I'm so focused on, I want to get the NAPLEX done, pass the NAPLEX, MPJE, get that done, get my residency set up, work with HR, make sure I'm on board, then start July 1st. And I don't think, wow, I could uh, really make a huge impact on my own financial situation uh, by just kind of one move. So that was just, uh, that was kind of revealing uh, to me. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I mentioned this on episode 52, but it's it's ironic that there's this grace period between graduation and six months. And, and the more I think about it, the more non-gracious I think it is. Right. Because what happens during that grace period is, yes, it buys you time to make a decision. But, oh, by the way, all of your unsubsidized loans, which is most, if not all your pharmacy loans, those are accruing interest during that grace period. So action during that grace period is actually what we really advocate for. For. And I think what people need to be doing during the grace period is actually choosing with clarity, what we talk about here in this course, choosing with clarity the best repayment option strategy rather than kind of wandering and saying, oh, I'll, I'll choose that option. Because what we reveal in some of the case studies is that choosing the right option strategy can be the difference of fifty, dollars $100,000 between one option and another. So it's a big, big decision during that time period. And I think a lot of people don't know some of the tidbits like – the way they calculate income-driven uh, repayments is they look at your previous year's adjusted gross income on your tax return. Well, as as your Appy student would know, the the P four Appy income is probably what zero, close to zero, very <laughs> close to zero. So the the reportable income for a P four is very low. So if you're in a residency year and they're looking back at your adjusted gross income from your residency year, that's where people get into a situation where they might have a zero dollar payment. But if you have a zero dollar payment and you're even if you just click, click pay it to, to finish that payment, even though you're actually not sending in any money, that counts as a qualifying payment towards your 120 payments of the public service loan forgiveness. Whereas if you defer, those obviously aren't qualifying payments. I'm, I'm just laughing because my I remember this conversation with my wife. She was P4 and I was uh, working in the workforce and and she had made 7,000 and I had made, you know, something like, you know, 15 times that or something like that. Yeah. But it was just, uh, I, I understand exactly where you're going. We just did the quick math here while uh, we were talking. And if you say it's $27 a day in interest, then that 180 days of grace period is actually $4,860 uh, in interest that's happening over that six months. Not very uh, gracious, right? No, no. And, and And so it sounds to me that the best time for them to maybe even the best time to actually plan is probably right now. But if they're going to pick a day in the year, I almost feel like when they get to meet you at 
you'll be at APHA again this year, right? You have a good Absolutely. partnership. Yeah. So I yep. think that March, if you're a P4 going to APHA, uh, meeting you guys that March, that would really be, I think, one of the, the, the like deadline. I would put that as the deadline, like get everything straight by that time uh, or yes. the week after. So, okay, well, let's go back to the, the third part, which is optimize your payoff strategy. It sounds like this is when I've listened to your episodes and I've listened to those couples that are on point, they're on, you know, they are on it. They're together on this. It's kind of a little bit addicting, I think, where they they've gotten this kind yeah. of addiction to, oh my God, we just paid off another 5,000. Go another 5,000. Go, you yes. know, and there, and that sounds like that's where this part three is where they've got everything in place and now they've got the bucket and they are just attacking that bucket from all sides, you know, Velociraptor attacking it from three sides. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, tell sure. me a little bit about this uh, third module, optimize your payoff strategy, the, the Tim church, uh, you know, Daytona 500, you know, yes. hit the gas pedal. I'm laughing at Velociraptor because I have three boys that are fascinated with Velociraptor. So I, I, I come, I come home sometimes and I get Velociraptor by my three boys. So, uh, yeah, th this is the all in module with, with a little bit of a twist there as well. And, and before I go into the all in approach, actually lesson one of module three and, and Tim church just did a knock up job on this is looking at how do you optimize PSLF and how do you optimize non PSLF forgiveness? So just to touch briefly on the PSLF part, a lot of people don't realize that if, if you're going to go in with PSLF, we believe the strategy should be go all in. And we see a lot of people that are going half in with PSLF where they want to pursue forgiveness, but for whatever reason, they're making extra payments or doing these other things. And maybe that's because they're, they're uncertain, it's uneasy, whatever. But really the strategy, in our opinion, with PSLF is if you're going to go all in on PSLF, own it. And how do you own it? You minimize payments, so you maximize forgiveness. And ultimately, how do you minimize payments? You lower your adjusted gross income. Well, how do you lower your adjusted gross income? You max, up, max out your retirement accounts, right? So the beauty, and we talk a lot about this in, in much more detail than what I'm alluding to here, is there's strategy here with optimization of PSLF where not only do you maximize forgiveness, because remember with PSLF, it's tax-free forgiveness, but simultaneously, you're also growing your investments. And as we know, 10-year period, maxing out accounts, you're going to really start to start to get on the journey of building wealth. And when we were building this course one weekend, we were in Baltimore, I think it was late at night. We had been working for 12 or 14 hours or something. And Tim Church and I were talking about my situation is that I actually work for a PSLF qualifying employer. And so I went back and did the math and we were kind of nerding out one night and saying, what if I would have went the PSLF route where I would have went all in on PSLF and maximized out retirement accounts? And that was about a $300,000 swing. That's a sad so I story. I try not sad, to think about story. it. <laughs> but, um, so we give everyone the strategies in here of exactly how to do that, how to analyze it. But then the other part of this is what we call the Tim Church plan, which is really kind of the all in full throttle to say, OK, you've determined that you're not pursuing forgiveness. And you've determined that you're somebody that wants to go all in because you don't want these loans on your back. You want to move on with the rest of your financial goals and whatnot. What are the strategies to grow your income, to maximize your income, to hustle, to cut expenses? And how can you obviously work with somebody else if that's in your situation to be able to do that? And so this gets into things like side hustles and cutting expenses and going all in. And to your point, the, the interviews and the podcast we talked about I think of the interviews I just did like on episode 50 with uh, Jill and Sylvan Pallier, uh, Adam Patterson and his story, uh, what him and his wife did and some of the others where these are stories of people that are making five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar a month payments for their student loans. And now you talk to them and they're three or four years out and they're saying, hey, I'm making six figure salary and I have no student loan debt. And that's obviously the all in approach may not be for everyone, but for those that want to pursue it, that's really what module three is all about. We kind of help walk you through the process of doing that. All right. Well, I've asked you a lot of questions. Is there anything uh, else that you wanted to say about the course uh, before we sign off? I'm excited and I hope the listeners can just hear my path, even just talking about it. I really think the value, uh, it, what it brings, we, we really built this around the, the philosophy of providing as much value as we could to get you to the one 
payoff strategy and plan. And obviously much of this was built off of things that we didn't know along our path and along our journey. So I would just, again, point people to courses.yourfinancialpharmacist.com. Again, that's courses.yourfinancialpharmacist.com where they can learn a lot more about the course, uh, what it's offered. And of course they can purchase it and begin on their own journey towards getting clarity with their student loans. So thank you, Tony, for having me on. I appreciate it. Support for this episode comes from Goodnight Pharmacology, 350 brand and generic name drugs with classifications, a leading resource for students in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia. Print, ebook, and audiobook available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag #PharmacyLeaders. 